Oh, well, hello there. Uh, so I thought I would address today one of the most frequently asked questions about the great bassoon. And that is, why is it in G and not in F? Well, to understand that question, let's talk about the bassoon itself. So I've got my bassoon right here. And let's talk about what key the bassoon is in. Everybody will agree that the bassoon is a non-transposing instrument. That means when I play a C, it will sound a C, just like this. But what is the fundamental scale of the bassoon? Well, the fundamental scale of the bassoon is not C, it's F. And again, I think every bassoonist will agree that the bassoon's fundamental scale is F. Well, this means that if the instrument's fundamental scale is F, the, the bassoon itself is, well, it's already in F. That's kind of a, an odd thing to think about, that the bassoon is actually an F instrument. But it makes sense. Every other woodwind is named for its seven finger note. That is the note that you play with seven fingers down. In the case of the bassoon, it's F. We're not counting the, uh, the chromatic keys next to it for the seventh finger, but seven fingers is an F. To better illustrate this, let's take a look at a cousin of the bassoon in the recorder. This is an alto recorder. Its seven finger note is F. So we call the alto recorder an F instrument. However, just like the bassoon, it does not transpose because all recorders read in C notation. So if I were to pick up a tenor recorder, I would have to actually use a different set of fingerings for the notes because the tenor recorder's seven finger note is C, same as the low note of a flute. And my figures don't want to find the holes on the tenor recorder because tenor recorders have a really large stretch in the right hand. Um, what bassoon is most uh, like in the recorder family is, of course, the bass recorder. Well, which I just uh, happen to have right behind me right here. Now, like the bassoon, the bass recorder is going to read in bass clef. So the bass recorder will use essentially the same fingerings as a bassoon. So this is an F instrument, even though it reads C pitch. Well, this gets us back to the great bassoon. Why is it in G? Well, because if the bassoon is really in F, that means that the great bassoon isn't really going to be in G. It's going to be in C, which is a pretty friendly key. That means that I can use C fingerings for the bass scale. If I were to put the great bassoon in F a whole step lower, the fundamental scale isn't going to be C. It's going to be B flat. Now, B-flat instruments are super common, like uh, this B-flat clarinet behind me, um, or B-flat tenor sax, B-flat soprano sax. But in the bassoon family, it makes more sense to have that instrument in C. So I can play with a C scale in the fundamental octave. In fact, an oboe player should be able to pick up the great bassoon and use oboe-like fingerings on the great bassoon and not even have to transpose. That's an added benefit of putting it in G. If you think that you're using C fingerings as your fundamental scale, 
you can read off of untransposed music, meaning that you can read something like a tuba part which would open up a lot of possibilities. You could just bring a great bassoon to a band rehearsal and hand, get handed a tuba part and just read it straight off of there. Just switch your fingerings from F to C. Much more versatile than putting the instrument in F. One of the other reasons, if I put the instrument in F, that extra whole step, it's going to start becoming a little bit too large for the player in its current shape. It probably wouldn't be made in the giant upright uh, position. That said, on such an instrument, we'd probably only go down to a B flat, so you'd only be looking at a semitone lower. So it may not be that much larger, but you start getting to the realm of being just a little bit too big in its current shape. As is, remember, the current great bassoon is standing about six feet, eight inches tall. Uh, that's like 2.2 meters or something. Uh, I, I haven't converted it over to metric yet, but it's about that much taller than I am, and I'm a pretty tall guy. So putting an F becomes pretty unwieldy. But it's not really an F, it's really in C. So that answers the biggest question I get is why is the great bassoon in G and not in F? Because double reed players see, oh, oboe is in C, English horn is in F. Well, likewise, the bassoon is in C. Shouldn't the great bassoon be in F? Well, so oboe, then English horn, then bass oboe, and then bassoon, and what you would think is a full octave gap between the bass oboe and the bassoon is actually only a fifth of a gap because the bass oboe doesn't have the downward extension that the bassoon does. So I think that should clarify things why the great bassoon is going to be in G and not in F. F. If you have any questions on that, feel free to comment down below. Uh, by the way, you can see behind me here, I now have two completed bells of the Great Bassoon. Uh, this is the newest one here, fully complete, uh, except for the key work, of course, but completely printed. It actually has um, the um, some of the mechanics already put into the post. Um, the posts are now fully integrated into the body. Hopefully within the next week, uh, we'll be able to start printing the base joint. Um, Jared and I have been doing some really long design sessions on the base joint and it's turning out to be a lot more complicated uh, than we initially thought, um, it, which means the boot joint even more complicated. This is by far the simplest of the four, really five joints. So that's a little update. I now have two of these bad boys. One, two. Um, but yeah, any questions, leave them down below. And as always, thanks for watching.